Welcome to Lecture Online. Our next example for solving a transistor circuit is a little bit more challenging. What we're trying to do here is determine the voltage across this 200 ohm resistor. We're also trying to determine the voltage between C and E, between the collector and the emitter. There's a 5 volt voltage source driving the base current. There's a 10k ohm, 10,000 ohm resistor in the base current circuit. Notice there's also 500 ohm resistor here in the collector circuit and there's a 12 volt voltage source driving the current through the collector circuit. In this particular case, let's say that the beta, the current gain is 100. That means the ratio between the collector current and the base current is equal to 100 to 1. Let's do our first mesh right here. KVL, the current, uh, the Kirchhoff voltage loop number one. Starting from this point right here, going across the 5 volt, five volt uh, voltage source, that's plus 5, minus the voltage drop across the resistor right here, because we're going with the current, that's 10,000 or 10K times the current, which is I sub B. Then we have a voltage drop from B to E, which is 0.7 of a volt, 0 0.7, and then we have a voltage drop across here, which is equal to V sub O, minus V sub O equals 0. So let's try to solve for V sub O right here, but that means we need to know what the base current is. Hmm. But there is a relationship between the current going through this resistor and the current coming here to the base. Remember with the current gain, we can say that beta is equal to the ratio of the collector current divided by the base current. And that means that the base current I sub B, e, or I sub C I should say, the collector current is equal to 100 times the base current. I sub B. E. We also know that the collector current or the emitter current I sub B, e, the emitter current is equal to the collector current plus the base current. Since the collector current is 100 times the base current, that means that the emitter current I sub B e, is equal to 100 times the base current plus 1 times the base current, which is equal to 101 times the base current. So now we can describe V sub O in terms of the product of the resistor here times the emitter current, and the emitter current can also be written in terms of the base current, which means that this can now be written as follows. I'm going to subtract 0.7 from 5. This is 4.3 minus 10,000 times the base current minus the voltage across this, this resistor, which is the resistance 200 times I sub E. That's equal to zero. Remember that I sub E is equal to 101 times the base current, so we can write 4.3 minus 10,000 times the base current minus 200 times I sub E, which is 101 times the base current. Which means that I have 4.3 minus 10,000 times the base current minus 20,200 times the base current, which means that 10,000 plus 20,200 or minus 30,200 times the base current is equal to minus 4.3. Then divide both sides by minus 30,200. We get 4.3 divided by 30,200, and I get 1244 microamps. So I sub B e is equal to 142.4 microamps. Now that I have the base current, I can then plug that back into my equation up here to calculate the voltage across the 200 ohm resistor. Coming over here, I can say that V sub O, when I move this to the other side of the equal sign, is equal to 4.3 volts minus 10,000 times the base current. So this is equal to 4.3 minus 10,000 times I sub B, which is 142.4 microamps. Oh, something is not right here. I think I made a mistake. Let's go back over here. I don't think this is 100,000 or 10,000. Let me go back. V sub O equals I sub B times, oh no, I do have 10,000. Okay, I got it right. This was right, 10,000. So 10,000 times 142 microamps times 10,000. 
equals gives me 1.424 volts. So this is equal to 4.3 volts minus 1.424 volts. So subtracting that from 4.3, I get V sub O is equal to 2.876 volts. All right, that was the first part of the problem. We still need to find the voltage from C to E, from the collector to the emitter. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, we use mesh two. So KVL2, Kirchhoff voltage loop number two. Starting from this point, going across V sub O, so that's V sub O, and then going from the emitter to the collector, plus the voltage from the collector to the emitter, or from the emitter to the collector, I should say, emitter to the collector, minus the voltage drop across the 500 ohm resistor, so minus 500 times I sub C, and then minus 12 volts back to zero. So what we're trying to do here is find V from the emitter to the collector. V from the emitter to the collector is equal to, bringing the 12 across, 12 minus V sub O and plus 500 times I sub C. Remember that I sub C is 100 times I sub B, and I know what I sub B is. So plugging that in, this is equal to 12 minus V sub O, which is 2.876 and plus 500 times 100 times the base current, and the base current is 142.4 microamps, 142.4 microamps. All right, let's go ahead and do that now. Um, 142.4 e to the 6 minus times 100 times 500. That's equal to 7.12. So this is equal to 12 minus 2.876 and plus 7.12. Is that a plus? Let's see here. Yeah, that was minus here. When I bring it across, that becomes a plus. So this is equal to something is wrong with the sign. Let's see here. Ah, yeah, I suspected there was something wrong. But when I look at it, if I go around the loop like this, I have a voltage rise, not a voltage drop. So this becomes a voltage rise. And that means that this becomes a voltage drop, and this becomes a voltage drop, and this is a voltage drop. That's much better. Otherwise, the voltage would be way too high between the collector and the emitter. Now I'm ready to go ahead and take 12 minus 2.876 and minus 7.12. And what I have left is 2.004 volts between the emitter and the collector. So now I have everything I need to know about the circuit. Again, the methodology was we used the mesh method. We added up all the voltages around mesh one. We added up all the voltages around mesh two. With mesh one alone, I was able to find V sub O because I was able to express the current through the emitter and the current to the base by this relationship. I emitter is going to be I of the collector plus current of the base and the current of the collector is 100 times, beta is 100, 100 times the base current plus one times the base current is 101 times the base current. So I was able to replace I sub E with the base current and then solve for the base current, plug that back in, solve for V sub O, and once I knew V sub O, I could use mesh two to find the only unknown that's left, which in this case would be uh, the voltage between the collector and the emitter. And that's how we find the various components of the circuit using the mesh method. A little bit more challenging, but fun once you have the right answers at the end.